International Polar Line Foundation, um, our main mission is to contribute to thriving coastal communities. Essentially we believe that the people, seas and businesses connected with these communities deserve a bright future and we hope that we can contribute to that and we believe that Polar Line Fishing really contributes to that. We work on that mission through two key areas and we work on that with our supply chain members and those areas are we try and um, drive demand for Poland line um, fish and improve the fisheries uh, from which it's coming from and we try and promote the benefits um, of these fisheries through the supply chain as well um, with people in the countries that are buying the fish. Um, this year has seen a really big ramp up in our activity for the International Polar Line Foundation and for me personally it's my first year working with the foundation so it's been quite exciting. I think if I was to choose one thing that I'm most proud of in our work, it's a recent project we've had with Swiss retailer Migro and the Maldives Fishermen's Association. And what that is, is a fishermen's community and training centre and we're working um, locally in the Maldives to deliver practical education for the fishermen there. That's really important because it's, um, it's elements such as training on safety at sea for the fishermen and best practice sustainable fishing methods. So it's very practical and means that we're really contributing to the well-being of the people working in the fisheries as well as um, preserving sustainable management of the tuna stocks. tuna fisheries and for ourselves as the Polar Line Foundation we see a really big challenge being influencing wider policy and management of tuna fish stocks um, to ensure that they are managed sustainably and populations are healthy. Um, that's really quite a big challenge because tuna as a fish and the different species of tuna they range over really large areas of ocean so managing the populations isn't the responsibility of any one country it requires coordination of a whole load of different countries and governing bodies. So that's a really big challenge. Um, as a small charity, while we work internationally, we feel like um, the best way to approach that challenge is for us to really strongly collaborate with other partners and players out there. So that might be on the policy side of things with government bodies, also with other charities working in this sector, and particularly with um, our supply chain and industry partners and members so that we feel collectively um, we have a greater chance of, of influencing the sustainable management of these tuna stocks and hopefully improving those stocks um, which are under pressure right now. Generally I am absolutely terrible at getting out of bed in the morning, I freely admit. Um, I'm much more of a night owl than a morning person, but in terms of what drives me overall, I think what attracted me to working in this, this sector, in this area, with the Polar Line Foundation, is the real people side of it. So I sort of historically have worked quite a lot in the sustainable seafood sector, but more on the environmental element of it. And I really was just attracted to the the fact that these local coastal tuna fisheries are so important to the livelihoods and the well-being of the people who are living there, as well as being important for global food security and feeding um, those of us who like to eat tuna. So it was really the people side of it that I think gets me going and just about gets me out of bed in the morning, but keeps me going late into the evening at least. to feel like the Poland Line Foundation is really helping to have Poland Line fisheries and these coastal local fisheries be truly valued. Um, what I've witnessed is that these fisheries are often in communities where there's not that many other employment opportunities and they're so important for the well-being and the livelihoods of, of people there. So I think that's the thing I would most like to see us um, demonstrate through the supply chain. Often there's like a disconnect between those of us in Western countries who are buying and eating tuna um, to really know where that comes from and what it means other than perhaps like a tasty tuna sandwich at lunchtime. So I think it'd be really nice if we can create some kind of connection between the end consumer and the fishers where it's coming from and for there to be a greater understanding of the real value of, of that fish um, to the communities um, who fish it. <laughs>